Hi everyone, welcome to Birds of Geek episode 9. I'm Amy and with me as always is Barry. Hey all. And Anthony. Hello. And today we're going to review, um, well, I was going to say one comic but it's kind of two. So we're going to review them as a group that's something that we've all read. Obviously for all the for reviewing it but anyway so the two that we're going to review are Milford Green and then Beyond Milford Green which are both written by Samuel George London and with the art by I want to say Michael but I'm not sure if that's pronounced right Hankinen or Mikhail Mikhail I'm assuming the last name is Hankinen despite me wanting to say Harkonnen all the time. Anyway, uh, apart from winning the prettiest village in the British Empire 1897, Milford Green is a normal village in the rolling hills of southern England. That is, until one summer's evening when Alfie Fairfield, a socially awkward inventor, sees some kind of flying vehicle shoot across the sky and crash land into a field. Being a curious fellow who's interested in any type of machinery, Alfie investigates to find out that we are not alone in this universe. Milford Green is, a, is the complete one-shot story of what happened on that night in 1897. Not to be confused with what happened on a night in front of a um, uh, Tesco car park in 1997 with me and the dude to Santa Claus. It's a completely different story. I mean, that was 100 years later. Yeah. Exactly 100 yeah. years. <gasps> Good point. <gasps> Nugent Green coming soon. <laughs> Where do you want to start? So I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna start. Oh, now you're gonna start. Now yeah, no, gonna no, because this is this is pertinent because Uh-oh. Barry sent us the info about the second one, which is coming to Kickstarter as well. It will be live as this goes. This episode goes out, and I just said, yeah, let we'll we'll review that without really looking too closely at it. And then Barry also very cleverly got us the first part to review because the second one does very much follow on from this and again i kind of just thought oh, i'll read this now flicked past the cover and started reading it and i thought this is quite nice i quite like this nice and uh, nice homely english village 1897 jobby a uh, little cameo from hg wells and stuff and i wasn't expecting the aliens <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly there was aliens and i was like oh it's aliens now great and I, and, I thought, and I was kind of like, you know what, I was in anyway, but now I'm even more in. And it, <laughs> but it was just because, because I just completely hadn't, I, you know, I didn't even look at the, the cover that closely, so I didn't see the obvious spaceship on the cover until <laughs> afterwards. Um, but the fact that, you know, I, I was reading it, and I was kind of quite enjoying the story anyway, enjoying, you know, the setup for the characters. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, aliens. And then you had a little bit that was almost Green Lantern. And it's then it was like... Green Lantern. And, and, and then this kind of like, I don't know, not quite a base under siege story, but almost a base under, under siege story. And it was like, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. So it took me by surprise because I'm an idiot, but, but it was <laughs> in a good way, in a very good way. I wouldn't put it took me by surprise because I'm an idiot on the back of the cover. But, you know, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really, it was nice. It was a fun read. It's something that. I could see us reading Takara as she gets older, because mm. this is this is um, this is right up her street, you know, aliens. It's also very much, I would say, it's an all ages comic as well. Really, there's it nothing, is. There's yeah. nothing like violent or you know, sexy times or whatever in it. It's just it's just a nice, fun story. Yeah, and I, th- I think the art was really really nice and. I like the fact that it's it's very it's not simple underplays it. Simple's not it, the word I'm looking for. To, to me, it's it's um, it's an art style I don't usually go for. So it's slightly manga in style, and it's very. But what I really like about it, and it, this is really weird because I don't like sort of dull pastel colours, but they they're not dull. They're kind of bright pastel colours, if that makes sense. And it kind of really suits the tone of the comic nicely. It really suits that kind of, you know, that English village life sort of uh, sort of thing in my book. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I mean, I I reviewed this uh, on 
on the website. Um, one of the few times I've actually sort of, I was going to say put pen to paper, but I suppose it's finger to keyboard. And I did sort of gush about its comic because I did, I, I absolutely, I, I gave it four out of five. I absolutely loved it. And to sort of go pick up your point in the art, and it's, it's not rare because lots of comics obviously do it, but the tone of the art fits the tone of the story so well. Mm. And there are comics that I've read where that hasn't happened and it can be jarring one way or the other. Whereas here, it, it just fits it brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely. It's glorious. I really like it. I, I like the muted colours for this story. It works really well. The story itself, I know I know what Amy means by simple, but it's 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 not simple. It's a, it's, it's a classic hero's journey. So it's a classic yeah. story. I suppose is a better way to look at it. So you kind of know. You're better with the words being the writer. Ah, get out of here, crazy kid. So anyone who knows that kind of hero's journey, that sort of Luke Skywalker type, you know, it, it's kind of all there. But there's a panel that you where you kind of know that you're in a different story. And it's basically, it, it reminded me the first time I saw it, it reminded me of that scene from Star Wars where Luke is kind of, sitting and he's looking at the two sons mm. um and there's a similar um yeah. page here where he's doing the same thing and it's like the first time he sees the spaceship and on one hand you could kind of look at it not really realize what's going on i.e and and just think <laughs> someone's done a nice point countryside um panel for their comic you know this is a, and then you sort of turn the page and you sort of go oh hang on a minute so yeah, it, it sets it sets it up really nicely. But also one of the things I quite liked, which is why I wanted you both to read it, is the main character really reminded me of Ant. He, he does. Yes. <laughs> yes, he really does. I wasn't going to say that, but yeah, he completely does. Yes. Sorry, I'm I'm still processing that. It's a it's a it's a compliment. It's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Not just in look, but also in manner. It, it yeah. really, the first time I read it, it, it really, rem- I was like, what's Ant doing in a comic? <laughs> or what's Ant doing in Victoria time? You know, it was really, really weird. That's um, my husband's a time traveller. Yeah, who knew? But, I, I mean, I've written in my sort of review that it's a charming adventure with likeable characters and villains who are desperately waiting to be booed in his hat. And, you know, when, when, the, when the bad guys come in, they're the bad guys. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> there's no, there's, yeah. There's no grey. And I think sometimes that's good, especially for like all ages comics days, that kind of classic good v evil type thing, which is quite nice to read sometimes. Also, the the other character, you know, he said it's, um, well, he, he's referred to as Mr. Wells. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think he's H.C. Wells. It, it's a mild spoiler, but the fact that when everything kicks off, his response is, let's make a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah you know that dude's got you, it. You, you know that you know you're in safe hands you yeah. know that at that point that i just fell in love with it because i believe that not enough stuff is solved with a cup of tea yeah because i'm i'm always disappointed at how little that tr- tea they drink in sci-fi yeah. <laughs> no it's serious i think there's a twitter rant about it somewhere the lack of tea i just feel tea would solve so many problems See, see again. I've got, I've got. So I was t- coming back to that panel you were talking about, B, and I think mm-hmm. it's, it's perfect for. I mean, it's basically the, you know, the the artist adapted it for the cover as well, and that's something yes. else we want to talk about in a bit. But that page, it's kind of like perfect in summing up both the tone, the adventure, you know, the, what's coming, as you say, the hero's journey, but also it's such a simple page, and the art style so simple, but the depth in the colouring really brings it out. Yeah, you, know, you feel like you are in the field. You don't feel like you're looking at a page, if you know what I mean. It's it's yeah. the kind of it is the kind of work that you could have quite happily as a print and have on the wall. Yeah, um, there's a real without... sense of depth to that um, page as well, isn't there? Yeah, I mean the the whole you know the whole comic is is the same, but that because that's a single page with just like you know there's no captions on it or anything. It just yeah, it's just a beautiful page. It's a beautiful piece of art, and yeah, it encapsulates everything that's going on. I must admit, at one point, I was kind of thinking oh he's fallen asleep on the on the grass and it's all good again because idiot not reading blurb <laughs> and he's gonna wake up in a minute because he's obviously he's reading war of the worlds yeah um, yeah you know, or a preview copy of it sort of thing <laughs> he's gonna wake up in a minute and it's, it's all a dream um 
but yeah, no, I'm pleased it wasn't though. I'm pleased, you know, pleased it didn't go down that road, and it is actually just this kind of like an alien invasion of a quaint country village sort of thing. It's 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 good fun. It's good fun. I like it. So obviously, there's there's three sort of. You've got Mr. Wells. You've got um. Uh, you've got Alfie, but you've also got uh, Mary Wells, who's Mr. Wells' daughter. And even though this is an all-age story, I think her story is quite it's quite jarring. Yeah, I mean, it, it starts off pretty much from panel one that she's in, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and while it's all ages, it's how... But it's dealt with in... In an all ages manner. In an all ages manner, and it definitely. I was a little. I wasn't overly uncomfortable, but I was a little taken back by it because it's not something you'd expect. You don't see that stuff in, the, in a comic. You know, if we might as well say it. So just a tiny. It's only a tiny spoiler, but her boyfriend. I don't know if it's boyfriend or husband, but he's clearly abusive. I, I think it's boyfriend. Yeah, I think it's boyfriend. Either way, he's clearly abusive, and it's not something you see a lot of. I can only think of maybe a handful of comics where I've seen it, and they're generally aimed at a much older audience. Mm, yeah. I, th- I think the other thing with it as well is it's it's not often you see in these kind of like, you know, Victorian sort of adventure serial type things that, that, yeah. that you know, that did go on. That was commonplace. Yeah. You know, and, and this, you know, it's the fact that, it's clear that people are aware of what's going on and are just ignoring it to an extent. And the fact that she comes out of it strong, yeah, you know, possibly in my opinion, a little bit rushed out of it, but then you've got 50 pages to tell this, this part of the story in. So, you know, you, you have to expect a bit of that, but it's, it's brave to do that and to actually, to actually show it and to have, have that in here, as you say, in an all ages comic, definitely. Yeah, and I, I think, I get what you mean about the Rush comic. I think if you read it a second time, I think there's more to see. Yeah. Mm. You know, little, little little looks, little nods from her and stuff. So I think it, there's there's certainly more there than I thought the first time, when I read it through the first time. Yeah, there is. It, it does, when you look through it, and there's quite, there's a lot happening in the backgrounds and stuff. If that makes sense, it's like yeah. you look. There is just lots of things all over the place, which I really like. I like that the art is so detailed. Oh yeah, I, I wanted to talk about the cover briefly because it's it's something I mentioned briefly about that that one page and this being an adaptation of it. But what I love about the cover is a it takes that moment and beautifully prevents it presents it in a slightly different way. It's the key moment, the turning point of the comic. So it's the, it's absolutely ideal moment to pick but also seeing and you get this a lot more in indie comics these days i i hate the big companies covers these days where it's generally it's drawn by someone else it's quite often not related to what's in in the comic especially with like um you know you get variant variant covers for things and they're all just basically pinups yeah but this is it's the perfect cover for it and and it goes back to you know what comics used to be they used to take that moment and amplify it but in this it's been they've been quite brave as well because they could have like brought in more of the aliens and the invasion and stuff but it's just that moment sums up the story and it's quite brave because if you see this on the shelves you might think oh you know that looks a bit you know passe kind of thing until you actually look at what's streaking past in the background but it is the perfect choice for the cover and it's um yeah it's a great choice and the, the artwork's superb on it and it's it's great to see the comics artist doing the cover and actually representing the comic with that cover as well yeah 100 percent agree anything else to say about this one or should we move on to the second yeah, yeah. so this is uh, beyond milford green and after the events of milford green victorian villagers alfie and mary find themselves in a spaceship heading to the united galactic alliance when they arrive the president of the uga asks them to go on a peace negotiation mission with the evil synux which will decide the fate of the galaxy Will there be peace or war? Mm. So this one picks up pretty much directly after Milford Green, literally like moments after. And while the art style is still the same, I found the colours incredibly different. It's still slightly muted, but the whole atmosphere very much changed, I felt. I I think it was good. Yeah, I, th- I think the difference is that it's it's got more of an unearthly quality about it because we're now, yeah. you know, we're in space. Yes, 
yeah and that's presented really well in it but it still keeps the original style so it's still the same characters it's still the same style but it presents it slightly differently to make it clear that this is not Milford Green anymore yeah and the thing I love as well is that consistency it comes in even even though we're now dealing with you know alien cities and alien spaceships and alien life forms and stuff that 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 those designs perfectly match the designs of the village it sounds weird when I'm saying it out loud but kind of the way they've been designed and presented it perfectly matches with the first part so it it doesn't feel too disorienting and too too jarring but also without being steampunk which would be the which would be by far the easiest thing to do is like oh it's victorian time so the aliens are also steampunk and it's like no these are futuristic aliens just with victorian england people yeah that's that's actually a really good point because it would have been so easy and in many ways when i read the blurb for it that's kind of what i thought it was gonna do that it was gonna be it was gonna be all steampunky um and there's absolutely none of that it is literally it feels very much like you know like war of the worlds like the original war of the Worlds, yeah. set in victorian times mm. except you know this now feels much more expensive and much more like a victorian version of star wars almost yeah. yeah and i think what you said about this the art feeling different from the first issue or, or volume or whatever you want to call it i completely agree with and i think that otherworldly quality is i couldn't put my finger on until you said it but that that's what it is i feel like you could put these back to back and you start reading through one you get to the other one you can see where it's different there's a lot more green yeah. to it. There's, there's almost green a greenish tinge to like every page i loved it i i it it, it did what a second volume should do um it continued the story it deepened the characters um it didn't retread or old ground which i think sometimes is the the trap that a lot of sort of sequels and second volumes fall into where effectively they give you the same story but with like larger stakes if that makes sense yeah um was was this definitely felt the middle you know the middle story in in what is a planned trilogy by the look of it yeah absolutely yeah it's i mean the the story of this one is a little bit twistier yes i mean for want of a better word uh i don't you know without going into any spoilers or something but after the straightforwardness of the first issue the first volume or the first part i wasn't quite expecting that and it was kind of one of those things where if you think about it you can see it coming but because because it was the first part was so tweezed the wrong word but you know what i mean sort of like so quaint and so straightforward that I wasn't really looking for it so it was it was obvious without being obvious I guess um which I quite liked and it's good because it, this second part it's almost like it's, it's a bad comparison but the Empire Strikes Back you know where things are a bit more complex than in the first part um yeah. and it's a good way of progressing it also I think they make um they make a lot more of Mary in this one as well yeah they do yeah, really definitely. bring her character out much more in um, this and give her more of an idea of who she is rather than just wells's daughter yeah 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 and, and so towards the end she's she's kind of dri- uh, driving the decisions a bit as well really uh, yeah rather than just like good being being the girl along for the ride which is good because it, it gives her some agency mm. uh, which uh, which is always good to see it's good to see a partnership rather than a, a clear lead because you know ba- basically i mean both of these characters are clearly out of their depth and keep yeah. being asked to do things that they they don't really know how to do, but they're willing to give it a go. Yeah, you know, and in some ways they, you know, they're they're quite naive, which again is nice because it it you know you pro- you probably would be <laughs> in that situation. Well, like, I, don't yeah. think, I don't think there's any probably about it. <laughs> you, know, you know, you don't you don't know what's going on. You're just going to go along with it, and you know, okay, fine, we'll be your ambassadors if that's what you want. Well, hey, more more see more of space, sort yeah, of thing. You know, space. It's, and and it's good because although you know they're clearly swept up in events somewhat, they do manage to take charge in a in a believable manner. And yeah, and it's uh, it's it's again it's it's yeah it's just a, a really good second part of a, of a trilogy, or hopefully more, but certainly of all, of this first arc being a being a trilogy, I would say. Yeah. What do we make 
of the new um i'm gonna say regular character rongara rongara yeah 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 um yeah i liked him i liked him i liked the fact that they managed to give him a backstory very quickly without getting too heavy into it yeah they did a really good job of that actually i mean the fact they've they managed to get you know they kind of told you you got a brief idea who he was and then in one page we're able to sort of give you you know the, the shitty life that he had yeah but um, also without him having without him expositing to alfie yeah. and mary you know they, they managed to to bypass that because you wouldn't you know you wouldn't just open no. it you go, nah. it's really got to everyone um but yeah they do it in such a way that we know but they don't it was great yeah no so i i yeah, I, I thought this was a fantastic sort of second trip to Milford Green or beyond Milford Green days. Yes. Um, and I'm happy to announce that the Kickstarter for Beyond Milford Green has already um, hit its target. Already? Wow. Good. Excellent. Um, by, by, by some way, as a matter of fact. If, I, I hope I'm reading this right. If not, uh, apologies. But as a, as of time of recording, their goal was four thousand pounds, and they currently have raised five thousand two hundred and thirty nine pounds. Yeah, you are That's not mistaken. Really that is what it says. <laughs> yep. So, so uh, yeah, so that's fantastic. That is fantastic. It 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 deserves it. Um, it really if does. You've, if you've not had a chance to sort of pick this and the first volume up, I would heartily recommend it also there's a i think the other thing we missed is that um there's a fantastic i know we've just said this whole thing about variant covers but there's a fantastic variant cover in this which is basically a take on the star trek the motion picture poster yeah um yeah but but the thing is though i said about variant covers the variant cover on this still tells the story of the issue yeah no yeah you're right you're right it's not it's not like it's it's not just a poster for the sake of being a poster it it the cover reflects the content yeah um, in a slightly more um exaggerated form maybe but it but it does you know it, it's that same job you know what you're getting when you pick that up yeah yeah no good point good point so um yeah so i'm i'm very much looking forward to seeing this uh conclude yeah, absolutely, and we'll obviously we'll put links to the Kickstarter up in the up in the show notes. So head on over there and uh, and give it a click, have a look. B, where's um where can people get hold of the first part? I believe it is being sold on um Etsy. I will find a link and I will we will stick it in the show notes. Cool. So so it is available um, certainly digitally. We highly recommend it. Certainly, I I highly recommend it. Get hold of it check out the second part on kickstarter um and yeah read it it's, it's great anything else to add on that oh. no i'm good read it it is fantastic there we go awesome so we'll wrap up there for you all we will be back soon and no doubt we'll follow our alternate format where we'll all have something different hopefully um so thank you for listening bye Cheerio. Bears, peeps.